So a couple of weeks ago, it's no secret. I've been very open about it. I've shared about the fact that I was, my position was eliminated at Chen Med, been going through kind of the whole grief cycle and just talking about my journey alongside with that. And so it was interesting because it just so happens someone had shared an article with me and said, Hey, what do you think? Cause I know you've been open about your story. And if you have not seen this, Bloomberg did a very extensive article where they talked about the rise of layoff influencers. And it really wasn't about layoff influencers per se, so much as this whole concept and the change of where it used to be much more normal to not talk about you know, losing your job. And now it's becoming not only more popular, but almost commoditized. And it was a very, very interesting article. And it hit close to home for me, especially because here I am somebody who's been very open about my layoff experience and what that's been like. And so it was really interesting reading the article. And so I thought I would share some of my reflections on it because there were, as you can imagine, some very strong opinions on both sides of it. And interestingly, um, I, as usual, if you followed me for very long, you know that I tend to see value in where both sides are coming from. And I usually find myself somewhere in the middle with distinct perspectives on all of it, but with a little bit of nuance to the complexity. So I'll share it. And essentially what it really was getting at is being laid off, losing your job culturally used to be a very shameful thing. You didn't talk about it. You didn't tell anybody. It was a secret. You know, it was very embarrassing to share this with people. There was a stigma attached to you and all this stuff. And it talked about how now that culture is changing and it addressed some of the complexity within that. But I think it didn't necessarily, it, I didn't think it addressed it appropriately, which I agree that there is something that is very difficult and there's a reason why probably not everybody talks about difficult moments. And one of the things I very much agreed with some of the naysayers for the folks who are open about talking about layoffs, the ones who go, that's terrible. You shouldn't do it. There was some genuine respectful points that they made on that, that I agree with. And really the ones that I think is very much something that should be considered for anybody is what really is the purpose behind this? And some of the examples that these naysayers highlighted was people who were literally commoditizing an emotionally traumatic moment and almost exploiting it for their own gain. Now, granted, I don't think it was fair how they painted it with a broad stroke brush that anybody who's talking about their layoff is trying to gain something from it. Um, you know, and I think they highlighted some real risks that people need to be aware of, that they're while we'd like to say society has moved forward, while we'd like to say things have changed, there still is very much a stigma attached to it. And I know because I'm an HR exec and I've been in the space long enough, I'm in lots of conversations with hiring managers, I hear all the things that are said. And people do have a perception of what they think about people. And usually it's an argument out of silence. And I think in some ways, that's where this whole concept of talking about your layoff, I think while I did it, I actually would encourage people to be very, very thoughtful and discerning before doing it. I really would. And so just because people may be like, well, Christopher, you talked very openly about the emotional journey you've been on. You've talked openly about the experience. You let people know you didn't hide it. I did. Would I recommend that to everyone? I absolutely would not. And so if people were to have a private conversation with me, I would really want to understand their circumstances, their situation. I'd want to understand that, make sure they understood all the risks. I would want to make sure that if they are talking about it, they're representing it in a professional way that will not blow back on them in the future. Um, and that they also just really realize what they're stepping into. Because for every person out there you hear who has a story of, you know, I went on a tirade or I went on a sob story about my layoff and I got hired the next day because somebody heard my, for every one of those stories you hear, there's another story on the other side of a person who did it and now they can't find a job because they're permanently labeled as the unemployed person and oh, something must be wrong with them. And so there's a, you know, all this other stuff. 
So I think it's important to address some of the real inherent biases that we have about people who lose their jobs. And I think people who haven't lost their jobs really should take a moment to reflect on that and think about it. Whether you think people talking publicly about their experience or not is good or bad, I think if you haven't lost your job before, you really should check your biases and go, but, but what do I actually think about people like that? Would I second guess hiring someone if I knew they were out of work? Or would I genuinely want to assess them the same way I would anybody else and evaluate them you know, objectively? Because there is still a lot of bias. And while people are talking more about their layoff experiences, I can tell you right now in every company I've ever been in or advised, there is still a ton of employment bias, tons of it. Candidates are chosen, you know, we even private searches. It's like, oh, we don't want to find people who might be out of work. We'd rather find somebody who is gainfully employed, um, things like that. And so it's very much still a systemic problem that we have not overcome. So just because you see something like this and go, well, people are talking about it. So I guess culture's changed. I, I think there have been enough systemic problems in society that are now we talk about it, but we know it's still a problem. And this is, again, an example of that, where just because people are talking about being laid off does not mean the stigmas don't go along with it, doesn't mean that people aren't discriminated against because of it. But I think what was really interesting about this article was it did at least, I think, overall shine a positive light on the fact that, you know what, as a society, as people, we do need to be more willing to be okay with being open about hard times. And again, not everybody needs to do that, but we need to be okay with going, you know what, I'm struggling right now. I'm not okay. And here's why, because it is very lonely. It is extremely lonely to go through something like a job loss in silence and to feel like you can't tell anyone. And, oh, I got, I can't let people know. And gosh, the length I know people go to, to try and fake still being currently employed because they're so ashamed and afraid of people finding out that they're out of a job. It's it's honestly debilitating. And so if you're someone who's like that, I do want to encourage you and let you know, I also talk to a lot of really great people out there who don't treat people that way. And I've seen really great success with people being more open about it. Now, I think every person, and I think this is the caution that I would give to everybody is you need to go through that journey individually and determine what your comfort level is with being open. You know, so one thing I will say, even though I'm open about things, if you read any of my stuff about losing my job, there is no circumstance, in my opinion, where it is okay to slander or just berate the organization or the people you worked with. It's just not appropriate. And it's a bad look and it sticks with you. And even if you get lots of likes and comments and, you know, the people kind of patting you on the back going, yeah, good job for, you know, bringing out the truth. If you do it with that intent and that comes through, it doesn't matter how many likes or engagements you get, you are stigmatizing yourself. And that is a brand that will stick with you for a very long time. And you will make it very difficult to find new employment because nobody wants to hire somebody who just trash talks their last boss, their last company, their last group of coworkers. That doesn't mean you don't have to be honest or in certain situations, you may be more open about what you dealt with. Not saying that that's necessarily wrong, but I, I personally, everybody who listens to me by now knows where I come from, from a worldview. And as a Christian, I firmly believe that, hey, not only is it not a good look on you, it's not good for your mental health and well-being. There's a reason the Bible tells us like, hey, focus your mind on good things, on positive things. Like think on these things because when you don't and you start going down this path of trash talking and thinking about how horrible you get sucked into it and you may not even see it, but the people around you do. And I've seen people who go down this path. They show up different in interviews. They're angry. They're frustrated. They don't bring the best version of themselves. So not airing all your frustrations isn't just about like, oh, protect your professional image. It's actually for your own good too. And so if you are going to be more open about it, be mindful of that. 
be respectful because honestly, there is a lot that you have to learn from the experience. If you really think about it, there are probably a lot of things you can be thankful for along the way. And if you focus on it more like that and you do it as a way of showing support and allyship to other people who may be struggling, that's a very different flavor than I'm a disgruntled employee on a mission to just completely smear the place that I came from. So I think that's where there's a lot of caution. But I would also say, listen, I was very comfortable. So this is the second time I've been laid off. Um, the first time I was much more quiet about it. Now, part of it was I was in a very different position than I am now. And so I was a little more concerned about the bias, the stigma associated with it. I was worried how people would judge me. I think I'm in a different place than I am today. I'm in a different place today than I was then. So I think some of that I've just shed and gone, okay, I'm not going to hide from this. But I think you may also be in a completely different place where that bias isn't going away, regardless of how well you represent the situation, no matter how positive you are, no matter how good you do, there are going to be people who think negatively of you and who stigmatize you. And if you're in a place where you are not emotionally or psychologically ready to carry that burden and it'll be too much for you, I think there is nothing wrong with being private about it and saying, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be open. I'm not going to tell everybody about it. And I'm okay with that. I just think don't do it because you're ashamed and you feel guilty. Do it because you go, you know what? I just personally am not in a place where either one, I feel like I can represent it in a productive way or two, I'm just not in a position where any bias that may come with it, I'm really in a position to overcome that or feel comfortable with it. And I, that's where Again, I wouldn't just tell everybody, you know what, if you get laid off, go out there, make a post, tell everybody, tell the whole world. I think that'd be foolish. I think that'd be foolish. And I have talked to a number of people who have been inspired by some of the stuff I've done, and they've said it's helped me be more open about it. I've talked to other people who said, I was inspired by your openness. Here's where I am, and I don't know that I'm quite ready. And I've said, good on you. Good on you for going through that process of evaluating it, thinking about it weighing the risk, weighing the concerns and going, here's ultimately where I land. I'm not going to hide, but I also am not going to be super public about it. Okay, good. And so I thought it was a really interesting article. And honestly, it overall was well-balanced. Um, and I don't, again, like so many things, there's not a simple answer. Is it bad to post about your layoff experience? N no. Can you do it really poorly? Uh, yeah. Is it good to do it? Not necessarily to the people I've seen who I know are exploiting the experience for their own gain. I don't think that's cool either because there are people who have been completely traumatized by their layoff experience. And it is, if you look it up, it's like one of the most significantly emotional traumatic experiences in a person's life. And so to just exploit that for your own gain, you're not showing any sensitivity to people who may not be able to do that and may be struggling with it. And again, if you're doing it wrong, you may be perpetuating some of the biases that are actually making it harder for other people who are laid off and, and can't hide it or can't exploit it for their own gain. And so I think just being mindful of that, really objectively weighing your heart and saying, how am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Is it really for a greater good or is it not? And that's that's a personal decision. But I, again, I think the article did a good job of weighing both sides of it. And I would encourage everybody to read it to at least see, okay, there's different perspectives regardless of what side you landed on.